So anyway, now on in the spoiler section. Let's see here. What else this movie has is a flashback to the New Year's Eve in 1999, where Tony is with his science partner, Maya Hansen. He arrogantly avoids a crippled, a crippled scientist, Aldra Killian, who wants Tony's back in, in his endeavor for his advanced idea mechanics, or AIM, as it will be referred to in the movie. In one such, in one of the attacks that happens later in the movie, Stark overcomes his, well, ego, and, and issues a televised threat to the Mandarin, who responds by destroying Tony's house. After that scene, he finds himself in rural Tennessee. The world believes him to be dead. This is at the point where he teams up with that boy, who, is, his name is Harley, he's a uh, precious, is the word used here, a, a precious ten-year-old boy, and as I said in uh, video one of two, I did certainly like that character. Anyway, he's there to investigate the remains of a local explosion. He discovers it was triggered by soldiers from something called the Extremis Program, an experimental treatment to allow its users to recover from crippling injuries. However, it couldn't be used because human bodies couldn't metabolize Extremis because the users would heat up and explode and their deaths were covered up by manufacturing a terrorist plot. And that's the plot the movie is about. Anyway, he's in Miami now, because he thinks it's not A-I-M, he thinks it, it's M-I-A. Yeah, so that's why he's in, in Miami. But Stark infiltrates the headquarters using a variety of homemade weapons. Because, cause, and he gets that from the kid, you know. He is Tony Stark, he can make, he can make weapons out of nothing. How did, how did he make the original Iron Man? Anyway, when he's in there, he d he discovers that the Mandarin is none other than a puppet. He's actually a British actor named Trevor Slattery, who is obvious, you know, so he's acting the part. He is the puppet of, and you guessed it, Aldrich Killian. And I guessed it. So anyway, Killian reveals that he has kidnapped Pepper and subjected her to Extremis. That is, she is currently becoming one of those people who is heating up and either going to explode or be like one of the other ones where she just totally loses control. Anyway, he plans to turn her against Tony so that Tony will fix all of his his uh, inventions and maybe he'll return her, maybe he won't. Uh, they never actually say that. Anyway, the other thing is James, Tony's friend, is re is the Iron it has been rebranded as the Iron Patriot in this movie. And the suits his suit's blue and everything, and it is like an Iron Man suit. But anyway, suits in this movie, this, the Iron Man suits can be remote, remotely controlled, and that's exactly what, um, that's exactly what Killian does. Remote controls the Iron Patriot suit, and everyone thinks that James is in it, but he's not. Tony escapes and finds out that James isn't in the suit, and they and that's when we, when it shows the Iron Patriot. With which is being remote controlled, at, with the president, born in Air Force One, and he's gonna make an attempt on the president's life. So, Killian ends up capturing President Ellis, and James and Tony trace Aldrich to an impounded 
oil drill platform where he intends to kill Ellis on live television. Another thing, this was one of those confusing points I mentioned in the first video. The vice president becomes a puppet leader just as the Mandarin was. Following Aldrich's orders in exchange for extremists to cure a little girl's disability. I kind of saw that the cure for little girl's disability, but I didn't know what the vice president was doing along those lines. That's why I was confused. Anyway, there's an epic battle scene. During it, Tony summons all 42 of his Iron Man suits, remotely controlled by Jarvis. Some of them get destroyed in the battle. Pepper sur survives the extremist procedure. However, before he can save her, a rig collapses around them, and she falls 200 feet to her apparent death. Keyword there being apparent. You know how good I am at predicting movies. I knew she wasn't really dead. Nah. Not even in this type of movie. Anyway, Tony is forced into convulsion. Fronton Aldrich and traps him in an Iron Man suit that self-destructs. Is he dead? Of course not. Pepper, whose extremist powers allow her to survive the fall, kills Aldrich, who has survived the exploding armor. After the battle, Tony orders Jarvis to destroy all 42 suits, or all the suits that remain, I should say, as a sign of his intention to devote more time to Pepper. Is that the end of the movie? Almost. Pepper undergoes surgery to remove extremis, of course. And Tony finally go, undergoes surgery to remove the shrapnel from years ago. That's near his heart. He pitches his obsolete chest arc reactor into the sea, reason he will always be Iron Man, even without his armor. That's it. Well, that's all I saw. Uh, reading the synopsis, it turns out there's one section I didn't stick around for past the credits. I mean, come on, I was in an IMAX. In a post credit scene, it is revealed that Stark has been recounting his experiences to Dr. Bruce Banner. If you've seen uh, Avengers, I think, had him. If you've seen the Amazing Spider-Man cartoon, you know who Bruce Banner is. Or, or if you're an original uh, Marvel guy, I think you'll probably know who Dr. Dr. Bruce Banner is. Anyway, I wasn't there for that part, but basically, Dr. Bruce Banner awakens, having fallen asleep at the beginning of Tony's story, followed by the words, Tony Stark will return. Well, I don't honestly know that Tony, Tar Tony Stark will return. Maybe the ending, the very ending did something that I didn't see, but, I mean, he actually will return. I, I, they're going to do it somehow. They have to. I, I mean, can't have the Avengers 3 without Iron Man. Uh, Avengers 2, I should say. Stop. <laughs>